Of the great Italian cities, Ferrara is the only one to have an original urban plan that was not derived from a Roman layout. The city did not develop around a central area, as medieval cities typically did, but rather on a linear axis along the banks of the Po River, with longitudinal streets and many cross streets around which the medieval city was organized. The most significant characteristic of Ferrara's urban history rests on the fact that it developed from the 14th century onwards, and for the first time in Europe, on the basis of planning regulations that are currently used by modern towns. The network of streets and city walls are closely linked with the palaces, churches, and gardens. Throughout the 16th century, the city was planned with the aim of making it a future capital. Its evolution came to an end after the 17th century under papal administration, and it did not undergo any extensions for nearly three centuries. Ferrara was, and remains today, a medieval and Renaissance city. In 1385, the Marquis Niccolo d'Este ordered the construction of a defensive fortress and entrusted the project to Bartolino da Novara. The massive and majestic structure, with its moat, towers and drawbridges, preceded by brickwork ravelins, date to that era. Every side of the castle was equipped with an entrance, each of which was enclosed in a sturdy avant-corps, as high as the building itself, and connected to the surrounding walls and exterior by a drawbridge and ravelin. The moat surrounding the castle is still full of water. Beginning in the second half of the 15th century, the castle was renovated into a residence for the Este Court, which was definitively transferred into the castle in 1479, under Duke Ercole I. The new works contributed in gradually transforming the castle into a prestigious princely residence, as well as the seat of one of Renaissance Italy's most refined and cultured courts. The imposing towers, which are located at the castle's four corners, dominate the city to this day as an indelible symbol of the grandeur and magnificence of the Este family. Two-story buildings were constructed between one tower and the next to form a veritable fortress that opens internally around a large courtyard, its tall and articulated form offering an impregnable defense in its day. The Orge Garden assumed its present size and appearance under Alfonso I in the early 16th century. Over the centuries, the layout of the garden was modified several times. Its original arrangement of alleys was altered with the addition of orange trees, planted in large wooden vats. The use to which an individual building has been put over the course of its history is one of the fundamental elements determining the state of conservation in which it reaches the present era. The decent state of preservation in which Ferrar's Estense Castle was found at the beginning of the 20th century derives in part from the fact that it has always been used throughout its history. It was never abandoned or dissociated from its powerful image of important functions in the territory's government. Today, Ferrara's Estense Castle is the city's best-known symbol, one of the most visited Italian monuments, a prestigious and well-preserved example of a medieval castle, and at the same time a princely Renaissance residence. The small church of St. Julian was first built on the present site of the Estense Castle. The church was demolished in 1385 and rebuilt as we see it today, just a short distance from the earlier one. During the Renaissance, the city's history was intimately linked with that of the Este family and their rule. 
Ferrara was an important center in the Middle Ages, a city with its own laws and even its own coinage. But under the rule of the Este, it became a world-famous capital. The Este court was undeniably splendid, and for some four centuries it vied with those of cities such as Florence and Venice, and even the great European royal courts like France and Spain. Successive popes looked upon the Este alternately as dangerous enemies or indispensable friends. The enlightened patronage of the Este attracted all the best artists of the day. The family also played an important role in the political life of Europe, because their state formed a screen between northern and southern Italy, between the empire and the papacy. The Este displayed a liberal spirit, not only in the realm of the arts, but also in economic, ideological, and religious matters. After Duke Ercole I invited the Jews driven out of Spain to set themselves up in Ferrara, the city's Jewish community enjoyed relative freedom. Machiavelli was inspired by Ercole I d'Este in writing his famous treatise on the virtues of the perfect Renaissance prince. The construction of the city hall formerly the Ducal Palace, began in 1245 and was progressively enlarged toward the north until it reached its current dimensions at the end of the 1400s. It served as a residence of the Este family until the end of the 16th century. The massive arch that leads to the town square was originally called the Horse Vault. It is flanked by two monuments, one depicting Duke Borso seated on a throne, and the other Niccolo III of Este on a horse. The column and arch that hold them up are original, attributed to Leon Battista Alberti, while the statues are copies replacing the originals, destroyed during the Napoleonic occupation. A loggia dating from the Renaissance era stands just opposite the entrance to the square. The right side displays the marble-framed windows of the Estense apartment. The square, the 15th century work of Pietro Benvenuto de Ordini, is dominated by the splendid staircase of honor by the same architect. Dedicated to St. George, Ferrara's patron saint, the cathedral was built beginning in the 12th century and now bears traces of every era of the city's history. Its grandiose facade, with its unusual three-spired form, was begun in the Romanesque style that predominates in the lower part. The center of the facade is dominated by a Romanesque door, above which is a splendid prothrium opening onto a loggia and crowned by a tympanum. The upper part of the prothrium was constructed around 1250. It consists of a loggia above which the theme of the Last Judgment is developed on three registers. Of French influence, this work is unique in the panorama of Gothic architectural sculpture in Italy. Above the Romanesque base, the façade is composed of three parts, divided by buttresses and opened by loggias that rise up into three equal spires. The Romanesque portal belongs to the first phase of the edifice's construction and features elaborate decorative sculpture. Reliefs representing John the Evangelist and John the Baptist adorn the sides of the prothrium's arch. The supports of the prothrium consist of a serpentine column held up by a telemon, or human figure, which is in turn borne by a lion in marble from Verona. Young curly-haired men use both their hands to help them bear the weight of a column, which consists of a band of smaller columns that twist into a knot. A capital adorned with leaves crowns the structure.
The cathedral's majestic Renaissance bell tower in white and pink marble, an unfinished work attributed to Leon Battista Alberti, soars over Piazza Trento Trieste. Corso Ercole Primo d'Este was formerly called Via dei Angeli, after the church dedicated to St. Mary of the Angels that rises along its length. The Corso is one of the two fundamental axes of the additions to the city, carried out under Dirk Ercole. Lined not by businesses, but by beautiful palaces, it has preserved its character of residential artery that the Duke wished to give it. The urban works began in 1492 and were completed around 1510. Their purpose was to create a direct link between the southern part of the historical center, with the Estense Castle, and the northern part of the walls up to the Angel's Gate. The principles of town planning of the Italian Renaissance were implemented for the first time and on a grand scale at Ferrara. The urban plan put into action in 1492, on the orders of Ercole Primo d'Este, was based on concepts of the ideal Renaissance town, developed by Leon Battista da Berti, Vincenzo Scamozzi, and Filaretti. Biagio Rosetti made the palaces and churches the focal points of the views and perspectives within the city plan. In so doing, he made a vital contribution to the development of modern town planning. From 1995 on, UNESCO has included the historical center of Ferrara in the list of world cultural heritage as a splendid example of a town planned in the Renaissance that has preserved its historical center intact. The criteria used in laying out the city of Ferrara would have a deep influence on other cities, becoming norms in urban planning over the following centuries. the Palace of Diamonds, Palazzo dei Diamanti, at the center of the Addizione Herculea, on the important crossroads known as the Quadrivio de Angeli, belonged to the Duke's brother, Sigismondo d'Este. Its name derives from over 8,000 pink and white marble ashlars in the form of pyramids or diamonds that cover the two facades. The palace was acquired by the city in 1832 and today is home to two museums, the National Picture Gallery, and the exposition space where the famous exhibits of the Palazzo dei Diamanti are held. The architect Biagio Rosetti created an urban masterpiece, especially in placing its main decoration on the corner, an artifice designed to emphasize the importance of the intersection and turn the palace into a wholly original work, created for its perspective view, not for that of the facade. Indeed, the corner is embellished by splendid candelabras sculpted by Gabriele Frisoni and by a graceful balcony a bit farther back, the name of the Palazzo Schifanoia derives from the motto Schivar la Noia, meaning avoid tedium, and refers to the building's function as a place for amusement and recreation, as it was a so-called Estense Delizia, palace for recreation. Construction of Schifanoia began at the end of the 1300s in a green area near the Po River. Nowadays, the palace has the appearance of a long building divided into two wings the single-story 14th-century wing to the west, home to the Civic Museum, and to the east, the two-story 15th-century wing which makes up Duke Borso's extension of the years 1465 to 1467.
The interior decorations, including the Hall of Mons, were severely damaged over the years, though what remains of the splendid cycle of frescoes is widely considered one of the highlights of the Italian Renaissance. Palazzo Schifanoia's Hall of Mons, whose frescoes were commissioned by Borso d'Este from the greatest painters of the city's workshop active in 1470, is considered one of the most magnificent examples of secular Renaissance art produced by the Italian courts of the 15th century. Because of its artistic quality, as well as its many references to the era's Neoplatonic culture, one of the most important cycles of frescoes from 15th century Italy adorns the walls of the Hall of Mons, a collective work of many painters, including Francesco del Cossa and Ercole de Roberti. The large room is divided vertically into 12 sections, one for every month to be read counterclockwise, though only March through September have been preserved. To realize a cycle of frescoes that entirely covers the walls of the hall, developing in three bands, one above the other, in such a short space of time, must have required the involvement of Ferrara's entire workshop. The occasion for the cycle of frescoes was the expected investiture of Borso d'Este as Duke of Ferrara in 1471 by Pope Paul II. The subtext of the festivities embodied in the fresco cycle is a right ordering of mankind and nature under the good government of the Duke, the guarantor of peace and prosperity in the Este Dominions. The architect Pietro Benvenuto de Ordini was called upon to develop a ducal apartment on the upper level, providing the building with a salone suitable for presentations of ambassadors and delegations, a counterpart of the governing structure of Ferrara, housed in the former Palazzo della Ragione, destroyed in World War II. There, in the Salone dei Mesi, Cosima Tura's purely pagan cycle of the months presents the cycle of the year as an allegorical pageant, with the appropriate Olympian gods presiding on their fanciful cars, drawn by the beasts proper to each deity. The adjacent Hall of Virtues is embellished by a splendid ceiling with painted and gilded recessed panels, the 15th century work of Domenico of Paris. The work depicts the cardinal and theological virtues, together with the undertakings of the Este family. The sun struggles to penetrate Ferrara's winding medieval streets, miraculously preserved, which follow the course of a river that has long since disappeared. Via San Romano takes its name from the church of the same name, whose existence was documented in the 10th century, making it older than the cathedral. The street, of very ancient origin, belongs to 12th century Ferrara. The street is lined by porticos on both sides. At the end of the street once stood the San Romano Gate, no longer existent. In terms of fortifications, Ferrara is distinguished from other contemporary examples by the emphasis on the urban character of the city walls. Although the prince invested substantially in building the fortification system, his aim went beyond simple defense. He wished to give the walls political and social significance. Ideally, the aim was to provide citizens with a safe urban settlement where the fortifications not only indicated an extended limit to the ensemble, but also constituted an important element in the urban communication system. The walls of Ferrara offered an early reference for the design and further development of fortification engineering. Ferrara today boasts what was one of the greatest Italian centers of the Renaissance, where light and order, harmony and balance present history with the poetry of an extraordinary urban plan. In 1995, Ferrara's historical center was included on UNESCO's list of World Heritage Sites as a marvelous example of a city designed during the Renaissance, which has preserved its historical center intact. The unquestionably unique setting of the Po Delta is an area created by both the sedimentation of the river and the work of man, 
who over the centuries has controlled its course and drained the land around it. In the Delta area, nature, history, tradition, culture, and art intertwine to offer the visitor an original and surprising landscape. The Parco Regionale del Delta del Po covers some of Italy's most productive areas, rich in biodiversity. The park includes the country's largest protected wetlands, areas of great ecological value. It is a territory with a variety of natural environments, housing hundreds of plant and animal species. The considerable number of existing species is deeply linked to the diversity of local habitats, whose characteristics depend on the different chemical-physical conditions of the soil and on climatic conditions. The particular geomorphology of the territory enabled the growth of a deciduous and evergreen forests. Only a few traces of the ancient Bosco Eliceo, quoted in historical manuscripts, remain on the ancient dunes of the Ferrara coast. Around Ravenna, the wood is more recent and dominated by stone and maritime pines, the pine woods. Among the most important elements of the Delta landscape are the so-called valli, or lagoons, and wetlands. The brackish lagoons were created by the flooding of lowlands by the sea or by the human transformation of the territory for the purposes of fishing or producing salt. Within the park there is one of the few examples of freshwater wetlands in continental Europe. The so-called valley in Argenta and Mar Morta, which escaped the land reclamation activities thanks to their essential hydraulic function as expansion basins. The history of the Po Delta area is a story of a millenary interaction between natural forces and human activities, which fostered the existence of a great diversity of ecosystems and cultural landmarks. These elements continue to interact nowadays in a constantly changing context. The Delta territory was born over the course of millennia from the deposit of detritus by the Po, causing the progressive shifting of the Adriatic coastline. The delta is an area between land and sea that is constantly evolving, and which serves as a gateway between the sea and the Po Valley. Following the steps of medieval pilgrims, and of the Roman garrisons before them, the delta is formed by the geographical triangle connecting the three magnificent cities of Venice, Ferrara, and Ravenna, as well as Rimini, farther south. The human activities linked to aquaculture and professional fishing are permitted and even encouraged in the park wetlands, since they represent important economic activities with traditional cultural significance. The Delta Territory includes different types of water expanses. The so-called valli are inner basins of fresh, brackish, or salt water, such as the Valle di Comacchio, while the lagoons are fresh, brackish, or salt water basins islands or peninsulas, whose width ranges from several dozen to hundreds of meters, extend for kilometers. They are formed by the sand brought to the sea by rivers and shaped by wind and waves. These natural features protect the lagoons from the strength of the sea, giving them the possibility to survive. They are also picturesque. On the side facing the sea, they offer wave-swept beaches, while the inner side is covered with halophilic vegetation, which grows in brackish waters, together with cane breaks plunging deep into the lagoon. The biggest of these sandbars, such as Rosolina Mare, Bocassette, and Barricata, are used as beaches equipped for bathing. The geological evolution of the Delta, together with the turbulent history of such important cities as Venice and Ferrara, significantly shaped the settlement and growth of this area. The towns of the Po Delta are filled with churches, villas, and ancient country houses, as well as important Etruscan and Roman archaeological findings. The area is also a significant zone for traditional craft activities. The expansion of the Po River and its branches towards the east caused Sacca di Goro to fill up, giving origin to the city of Porto Tolle, extending the island of Ariano, and forming Sacca di Scardovari. Porto Tolle is one of the numerous urban communities of the Po Delta.
Venice and Ferrara often struggled with each other for control over the Polesine, as this area is known. In the 14th century, in 1404, and between 1482 and 1484, during the so-called Salt War, the two cities fought again for control over the Polesine between 1509 and 1512. The Po Delta was formed over millennia by the sediments deposited by Italy's largest river and redistributed by the action of the sea and wind. Over time, humans have acquired an increasingly important role in the evolution of the Delta, especially when, 400 years ago, they cut off the Po at Porto Viro, which led to the creation of the modern Delta. Today, their task is to revive the history and nature of this territory and become its guardians.